Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the top environmental career ideas for dealing with climate change and careers that are going to be more in demand because climate change is becoming a reality. Doing some research for this video, I saw a lot of like list articles that list, oh these are like the top green careers coming up with like a lot of careers that realistically are actually not in demand at all. So having been an environmental scientist and a wildlife biologist in my field for around six years now, I have a pretty good understanding of what you can actually get a job in now versus some idealistic career in the future that one day we're gonna have as climate change threatens our earth. <laughs> so this is the part three of environmental career idea videos. I will link to the other ones above and then below in the description box. Those are two other videos with top environmental career ideas for those of you who are trying to decide what career field you want to go into. Wildlands firefighter. So this one is going to become more needed as climate change increases the amount of large spread fires that we're having across the world. Wildlands firefighter is specifically working in forest grasslands to control the spread of wildfires. This job is outside, physically demanding, but you are actually boots on on the ground helping save people's houses and people's lives. You typically need at least a high school diploma, but you can get a bachelor's degree to get into this field. Relevant bachelor's degrees would be forestry or environmental science. If you have a fire science type of degree too, or specialization, that would be great. Salaries for this job are a little bit lower, so they start around $18,000 for your first season. Keep in mind that these are very seasonal, so a lot of times you won't have work in the winter, so you can work a second job and then going into around $50,000 for mid-career people who are able to maybe find a year-round job in this profession. Indigenous liaison is going to be someone who works directly with indigenous communities consulting about a new development being put in in their land to trying to get an understanding of how to reshape government policy around indigenous needs. This one sounds like the job I would never have known was extremely in demand when I was in school but it actually, now that I'm working in the field, especially in Canada, this job always has postings. Keep in mind if you live in an area with a lower amount of indigenous communities nearby, this might be a little bit less relevant, but this has to do with climate change because as we are developing more and more on indigenous owned land, there is um, a lot of conflict between indigenous communities and developers, indigenous communities and the government. Going off of that, a traditional knowledge advisor would be more so for those of you who are indigenous and using that traditional knowledge to inform environmental impact assessments and anything that has the potential to impact your land. This doesn't mean telling everyone all of the things that you wanna keep private in your community. It means more informing which areas of your community might be sensitive that should not be developed Education for both of those careers typically can begin at a high school diploma. If traditional environmental knowledge, you technically don't really need a, any sort of formal education. But if you are an indigenous liaison, then you generally start at around a bachelor's degree and you can get that bachelor's degree in a few different fields, environmental science, in indigenous studies, or sociology. Salaries for these careers can start at around 28,000 for your first few years, but it can go all the way up to six figures. Clean energy researcher. So this job is going to involve working in the fields of wind, solar, biofuels, and studying and researching how we can develop clean energy or work with existing technology that we have to further make clean energy accessible to the general public. Generally, this requires a degree in environmental engineering or civil engineering, although environmental scientists definitely get in on the clean energy development as well. If you are working in academia or research or high levels of the government, you will also probably need a master's degree or a PhD to get into this field. With a bachelor's degree, the average salary is going to be around $49,000. With a master's or a PhD or those higher level engineering positions, you're gonna make around 70,000 into the six figures. An ecotoxicologist. So ecotoxicologists look at the impact that pollutants or contaminants have on human and environmental health. 
and also suggest recommendations for how to mitigate against the impacts of those pollutants. This could include anything from working in the field to gather environmental data and samples or working in the lab to analyze those samples or working in the office to write up reports and recommendations for mitigating against environmental contaminants. Majors to get into this field would be biology, ecotoxicology, environmental science, and often higher level ecotoxicologists require a master's degree or a PhD. According to Glassdoor, ecotoxicologists can make around $52,000 to $70,000. Going off of ecotoxicology, a hazardous waste specialist or technician. These specialists and technicians technically track and handle hazardous environmental waste. As climate change means more and more we are cleaning up a lot of these hazardous and contaminated sites or creating more and more hazardous and contaminated sites, these technicians are going to be in very high demand and already are in high demand. So a lot of times you're working in the field in these types of jobs wearing personal protective equipment to take samples to clean up hazardous waste. You could also be working at a hazardous waste facility and monitoring the waste coming in and out and tracking that and reporting out as necessary to government agencies. In most cases, the minimum requirements for these degrees is a bachelor's degree. You can generally get a bachelor's degree in environmental science, chemistry, or environmental engineering. There's a big variety of subjects salaries you can make with this job because it is entry level but it also you can be a manager at a hazardous waste facility but it's going to range from around $30,000 to around $70,000. Restoration biologist or reclamation specialist. These scientists identify contaminated areas and provide advice or oversight on cleanup, complying with regulatory requirements for contaminated sites. They can also recreate wetlands and natural areas from contaminated sites, which is pretty amazing to see a site that's completely contaminated by an oil spill or by an old facility be transformed into something that is usable habitat for wildlife and plants. These fields are very in demand as contaminated sites regulations and restoration can often be quite specialized and very difficult to understand. Salaries for these types of jobs can go from 50 to $80,000 on average. Majors that you would wanna get into to get a job like this would be ecology, environmental science, or environmental engineering. Next job is an oil spills specialist or scientist. So someone specializing in oil spills specifically can do a wide variety of things from actually cleaning up the oil spill or just consulting on the best techniques for cleanup or developing technologies that better clean up oil spills. This could also include some sampling and analysis of oil spill areas. Salaries go from $50,000 to around $80,000 for oil spill specialists. This type of work is available in both terrestrial and marine environments. Majors to get into this career field would, you'd want to do environmental science, environmental engineering, ecology, chemistry, ecotoxicology. There's a lot of different avenues you can take to get into this career field. Solar cell technician. So currently manufacturing is the biggest green sector right now in the United States. So a solar cell technician is going to work to design or create those solar cells for renewable energy. So if you're looking more into the design development, that's gonna be more of the engineering side of things. So you're probably gonna to wanna to have an engineering degree. You're also gonna make more in those types of positions. Since it's such a technical field, it will often require some sort of technical diploma in solar cell work through a technical school, or if you're able to get some on the job experience and an apprenticeship, that could be possible. If you wanna go for your bachelor's degree, you can major in anything from environmental science to environmental engineering to civil engineering or environmental studies any of the more engineering type fields are going to increase your salary for technicians salary is going to be around forty thousand dollars for engineers you're getting more into the seventy thousand dollar range clean car engineer or technician or repair technician this is in the industry of electric cars and hybrid vehicles as more and more electric vehicle mandates come into the legislation. Like currently by I think 2040 in BC, all cars sold need to be electric vehicles. So we need people to build those. 
to design them and to fix them. So there is a big variety of jobs that fall under this umbrella. Those can be anywhere from a repair technician job, which is going to pay around $40,000 and require a technical diploma in automotive technology, specializing in electric or hybrid cars, or an on-the-job training experience, specifically with electric car repair. If you want to go more the engineering and the technician direction, you're probably going to need a bachelor's degree in environmental engineering or automotive technology. And if you were an engineer, salaries are much higher. So for example, Tesla engineers, according to Glassdoor, make from $70,000 to $130,000. If you're interested in hearing more career ideas, learning more about how to become an environmental scientist, subscribe to my channel below. I make videos like this all the time. And comment below which of these jobs you are most interested in. If you are interested in more jobs like this, make sure you check part one and two of my career ideas videos linked below. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.